Okay, let's move on to bounce checks. Bounce checks. We're gonna use bounce checks when your customer make, made a payment, you receive a payment from a customer, you deposited that payment, but then later on in the future, the check bounced. In other words, the bank took the funds out of the bank account. So how do we manage that? First thing is we have to create a service item for the actual bounce check itself, and we're gonna match that to the bank account. In other words, we're gonna create an item that matches the transaction that's going to be um, actually withdrawn from your bank account. Then we're gonna create an item for the actual fee, because for the most cases, when there's a bounce check, uh, we tend to charge our customers the fee that we get uh, charged from the bank. And that item can be mapped either to income, assuming that we charge over where our bank actually charges us, or we can map it to the bank uh, fees expense account if we're just getting reimbursed for that fee. Then we're gonna create an invoice uh, for the customer using the bounce check item and the fee. We're gonna record the bank service charge, the actual uh, money that was charged by the bank in the register. Then we're gonna go back and apply that, that check, the, the original payment that bounced to the new invoice to restore the original invoice that was created from the bounce payment. And then we're gonna receive a payment to match up that invoice. So really quick, this is what it looks like. You're gonna create the two items, bounce check and bounce check fee. As you can tell, bounce check is, is being mapped or is pointing to the checking account, to the bank account. And then the bounce check fee is being mapped to the bank's ch service charge account. And then as you can tell, there's an invoice being created with those two items. Let's go ahead and do an example. So in QuickBooks, I'm gonna to go to the gear menu, then I'm gonna click on products and services, and then I'm gonna create an item, bounce check fee. I already created it, so I'm gonna click on edit, so you can see exactly how it was created. So it's called bounce check fee, and it was pointing to the bank service charges account. So that's representing the income account, which is not really an income account, it's an expense account, but that's just the account that it's gonna be mapped to uh, when this item is used in an invoice. And then the second item, as you can see here, is this one called bounce check. And this one's actually being mapped to the actual, to the specific bank account where we're gonna see the money coming out of the bank account. Hit save and close. Let's go into the bank register real quick so we can kind of see everything based on the bank register. So I'm looking at the bank register here the Chase Bank Register. So I have a bank register here to illustrate exactly uh, what we're gonna do. Now, we're looking at a blank bank register that has no uh, balances or no, no transactions really on it. So we're gonna start from this uh, starting point with zero transactions. So then we're gonna start uh, the standard workflow. So we're gonna create an invoice, and this is the first invoice we created in which we're gonna receive a payment, and then we're gonna mark um, a bounce payment for. So I'm gonna create a normal invoice uh, for my actual work, and let's say this invoice is dated back in May 1st, and the invoice is for $750, and then we click on save and close. So it's a normal invoice, nothing changes from the workflow. Nothing is affected my bank register yet because I haven't received the payment. But on the next step, when, when I actually get paid from the customer, I'm gonna go to receive payments, and then I'm gonna select the customer that I'm receiving the payment for, and let's say, for example, I got the payment on the fourth, okay? And then I'm gonna come in here and select a check, and let's say it's check 2255. And then I'm gonna deposit this one straight into the Chase Bank account. So let's assume that we're not depositing this together with multiple checks. I select the uh, invoice itself, the dollar amount, and I'm, this is a regular workflow for creating an invoice and receiving a payment. So I'll click save and close. Okay, now in our register, we actually see the $750 coming in. Let's say that 10 days later on the 14th, the $750 get withdrawn from our bank account, and we need to figure out how do we even manage this whole process, right? So we're gonna create uh, an invoice for that bounce check 
with the fee. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, re and, and record the fee itself from the bank. So let's say on the 14th, okay, from Chase, I get a fee. Okay, so I create my vendor for Chase. And let's say I get a bank service charge of $35 for bouncing a check. Okay, so I'm just recording what my bank is going to charge me is at $35. Let me put the correct date here to make sure that we are on point here. Perfect. So there's my actual fee from the bank, the $35. Then I want to record the $700, $750 coming out of the bank because the check bounced. So that's going to be done through an invoice. We're actually going to create a new invoice just for that. So we're going to create an invoice. We select the customer. We date the invoice on the same date as the, as the payment bouncing. On the products and services, we're going to enter both things. We're going to enter the bounce check fee for $35. And then we're going to enter the bounce check item. And again, remember, the bounce check item is actually going to point to the bank account directly. Okay, so if you have multiple bank accounts, you may have to create an item for each of the bank accounts. So that would be bounce check, chase check in one, bounce check, chase check in two, and that sort of thing. So I'm going to put here 750. So now I have an invoice for $785. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on uh, save and close. So now I got the invoice created. And then you're going to see the invoice pushed into my bank register. The $750 coming out because we had that item pointing to the checking account specifically. Then what we have to do is we have to go find that payment and we have to apply it to a different invoice. So if we click on customers, so let me click on sales, then customers, and then I look for my AAA towing customer. I can go find the invoice that I received, not the invoice, the payment I received for 750. And then what I wanna do is I wanna uncheck my old invoice click on save as credit and then I want to go back into the payment again and I'll recheck it to the new invoice so the new invoice for uh, on the 14th is not going to apply the $750 there's, there's a very specific reason why we do that is because we want the original old invoice number to stay intact and we also want the original aging of the invoice to stay intact so by by doing this we effectively just match up the old payment that bounced with the new invoice. I mean, if you want to add in the memo, uh, bounce check or something like that, because it's 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 valuable for you to see it, that's totally okay. I mean, it's really up to you whether or not you want to see that on the memo. So then I'm going to click save and close. And then what will happen is the original invoice now, invoice 11119, that one stays open. That one's supposed to be open so it can have the correct aging, right? So this is now an overdue invoice. And now I'm going to have a new invoice with a balance of $35, which is going to be for the fee. So later on, when our customer pays us again, they're supposed to now pay us $785, the $35 for the fee, which is this is now the invoice that we're going to send to our customers just to, so we can get an idea more or less what this looks like. This invoice will say that there was a bounce check, 750, and it tells you what the balance is. It's very, very clear what the purpose of this invoice is. This is just to charge the $35. What some people do is in the description here, they'll put check 2255 or something like that because it, it will make more sense for, um, for the customer. And then when we click on print preview, you will actually see that description uh, on the invoice itself. So that's really uh, up to you whether you feel it is important to add that additional description in there. So now we have the open invoice for $35. We have the original old invoice for $119. Our bank account, let me just go back to my uh, bank account real quick to make sure our bank account is where it's supposed to be. Our bank account is now short $35, of course, because I got charged the fee and my client hasn't paid me yet. Uh, once my client actually pays me the, the, the old invoice that they owe me and the fee, uh, I should be now have a, a positive balance overall from the transaction. I mean, you, you could have a positive balance, obviously, from, from, uh, from other transactions as well. We're just trying to spot the difference between these. Then at the end, after the check uh, had, the balance has been solved and our client, your next client pays you, they're gonna pay you now to settle the account. Let's say they're gonna pay you on the 17th now. They're gonna pay you a, uh, a total amount of 785. So let's put here 785. 
and that now that should be applied to the 750 original invoice and to the $35 balance pending from the bounce check invoice. And then when I click on uh, save and close and I go back into my bank account, I should now be even, right? I got my $35 back from my fee and I got my $750 back from my bounce check.